Hey everybody, Chris, the old ass retro gamer here, back again for another monthly pickups video. Yeah, let me adjust my volume here a second. Uh, this is all of my pickups for the month of June. Um, still not trying to buy a whole lot uh, because summers, like I've probably said it before, summer is really bad for me, money wise. Uh, once the Midwest Gaming Classic comes and goes, the <clears throat> excuse me uh like just things start piling up like stuff with my car you know stuff with the apartment and all this kind of stuff so usually i'm oh i'm not really able to start going crazy like i normally do until maybe august let me see here real quick um so yeah i i, I do have a good amount of things here uh, it's because of special circumstances. And hang on a second. I'm double checking to see if the stream's actually going. Yes. What is up, Corpse Flood? Welcome to the stream. Glad to see you, as always, my my uh, super enabler brother. And uh, yeah, so it, August is when I get to start kind of doing my normal routine. Uh, not to say that I didn't get a lot of good stuff this month. I got actually quite a bit <laughs> like i said special circumstance type things happened so i'm going to go through everything that i bought this month from the oldest to the newest uh and of course at the very end it's going to be all of the limited run special reserve strictly limited type you know things that i bought a lot of them showed up this month so happy okay so let's start off with the oldest game first and that is for the super nintendo Jason knows why I bought this one. Yeah, that is Goof Troop for the Super Nintendo. Bought this for a very specific reason. I think he knows why. Uh, but if you saw last week's Top 3 Tuesday video, I think you'll get a clue. Uh, so I wanted to have this to talk about in an upcoming video. I played it a lot back in the day, rented it a lot, loved it. Um, it's, it's not something I would normally be into Disney type games at this point in time. were kind of like, eh. I mean, yeah, I buy the Lion King or I play Aladdin, but like I never watched the goof troop cartoon ever. So it was kind of like, whatever, you know, I don't really care. It's not really my cup of tea out of my age range, but, uh, when you're bored and there's nothing else in, sometimes you just rent things just to rent them. And that's exactly the way with this. And I was really happy that I did. It's a puzzle game it's like a top-down legend of zelda style puzzle game where you play as either goofy or his kid and you're kicking blocks around trying to cover up these uh switches to open up doors you're finding keys there's like pirates all over the island that you're playing on uh you got to defeat them you can pick up items and throw them at them uh it's really really fun and it's deceptively addictive i mean it, like you, before you realize that you've been playing it for two hours which is exactly what i did when this showed up in the mail i was like yeah i need to play that goof troop game again so i have it fresh in my mind when i talk about it in the video that i'm going to be featuring this in and i ended up playing it for like two and a half hours and didn't even realize i'd been playing it that long so really really fun game highly recommended it. and it's really really entertaining surprisingly entertaining yes Goofing the troop, yes. Like I said, never watched the cartoon or the movie. I think there was a movie about it. Never watched any of that crap. Wasn't interested. Uh, got a Sega CD game at Half Price Books of all places. Every once in a while, I'll go to this Half Price Books by where I work. And it's like, seriously, someone just walked in there with like their family's video game collection from like the 80s and the 90s. Um, I'll walk in there and there's this time when I walked in there, there was Sega CD games all over the place, Sega Saturn games all over the place. There were really expensive, you know, cart only uh, Super Nintendo and NES games there. There were some new Genesis games. There's a ton of current stuff, too. Normally they have stuff that's maybe a year older or a year old at that point and, uh, you know, and back. There was like stuff that was like brand spanking new. It's like someone just decided like I'm done with this video game thing and just dumped it all there. And I happened to be there the day that they put it all out. So I picked up a good amount of things there. Uh, this included Mighty Morphin Power Rangers on the Sega CD. There's another thing. I think Jason and I were just talking about this over uh, Facebook Messenger. This is not something I was into when I was a kid at all. Uh, way too old at this point when this was when this premiered. 
Didn't really care. Was not into martial artsy things at that point. Not until Mortal Kombat came out in 95. But even still, I was like, that's just a really stupid kids show. Never got into it. Only thing I can say that I like about Power Rangers is I enjoyed the new movie that came out a couple of years ago. That was pretty entertaining. Uh, but doesn't say that the video games are bad. Just because I don't like the source material doesn't mean I'm not going to like the video games. And I do enjoy a lot of them. This one is not a beat em up like the majority of them are. A couple of them are actually fighting games like Street Fighter. This one is a full motion video game where basically you're doing quick time events to episodes of the TV show. Yeah, that's the way it works. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, so I want to say how many episodes are in here? It says not just a fighting game, an all an all live act live video action adventure game produced directly from nine episodes of the hit show. So there's nine episodes of the series to play through in here. If one of them is that one with that giant lobster that that overdub video that was really popular about ten years ago on YouTube uh, came from is in here somewhere, I think I'll be really really happy because that's all I'm going to hear while I'm playing the game. Bring it down these crab nuts. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I bought it just because. I uh, Give it a shot. I love full motion video games. Quick time stuff. Everyone seems to hate it. I enjoy it. So why not? You know, give it a shot. Why not? I keep saying why not because why not? Okay. Uh, for the Game Boy Advance, uh, I picked up Justice League in Justice for All. Because I've been in a superhero mood lately. Uh, Endgame came out in April, at the end of April. I've seen, I've seen it twice in the theater, and I started getting back into watching the Mar the uh, DC movies. I got my, I bought a copy of Aquaman, uh, a 4K Blu-ray that also has the 3D version on it, and I've been getting back into watching all these DC movies. And I just was in a DC mood, and I was like, you know, I need some more DC games for my collection. And this was the one that I found on eBay, and it was super, super cheap. It's a side-scrolling platforming beat-em-up where you get to play as all these different members of the Justice League. All the ones that are pictured here on the cover. You got Superman, Wonder Woman, Batman, Flash, Green Lantern, Martian Manhunter, and Hawk Girl. Really, really fun game. Surprisingly, it didn't get great reviews if I remember correctly when this came out, but I don't care. Licensed games are my bread and butter. So definitely wanted to have a copy of this, and it's actually really good. Check it out if you haven't already. Let's see here. Uh, so now we're going into the OG Xbox. Picked this up, I think, earlier in the week. Yeah, earlier in the week. This is when I went to Half Price Books, and they had all that crazy stuff. Uh, I found a copy of Dino Crisis 3. I have never seen this in the wild, ever. Not even at the Midwest Gaming Classic. The, like, the five times that I've gone, I have never seen this in person. And then this is just sitting there on the shelf all nonchalantly, just like, la, 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 I'm no big deal. This is actually kind of an expensive game, and I got it for, I do believe, $17. Uh, I remember looking it up on eBay a while ago, and I'm like, yeah, I'm not paying 45 bucks for that thing. If, if, everyone's, if it's as bad as everyone claims that it is, yeah, I'm not paying that much for it. So it, actually, I think it was marked for 20 I got it for 17 because I had a coupon. Uh, so yeah, wanted to get it. Now I have... I do believe all of the Dino Crisis games. I have the first one for the PS1, the second one. No, I have the first one for the Dreamcast, the second one for the PS1, the third one here. Yeah, that's it. So, yes, yes, yes. Here it's garbage. It's dinosaurs in outer space. <laughs> Time to invite mom over. For what? <laughs> Okay, so going into the Xbox 360 now, uh, you'll see why I picked this one up later on in the pickups, I think. I think. I think. Yes, I did. Um, I have the first one for the Xbox 360. Actually, I had it for the OG Xbox, and then I realized that there was the upgraded version for the 360, so I picked that up instead, got rid of the old one. And now I wanted to look for the other games in the series, and there's Just Cause 2. Yeah, yeah, Just Cause 2. Uh, it's a third-person action game. It's just crazy gonzo action. I remember playing a little bit of the first one back when it first came out. I haven't played it recently since I bought it. Uh, actually, because my 360 is in the closet. Um, but, yeah, just crazy action. You have, like, a claw that you can latch onto things like Batman and, like, it has, like, a rope attached to it, and you, like, swing around like, you know, Spider-Man. Really, really fun game. If I remember the first one, I don't know. But this series has gone on and on and on and shows no sign of stopping. So, yes, wanted to get all of them. Yes. Oh, Aquaman. Oh, I get the reference. Mm. Mm. Long story. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, and the other 360 game I picked up is the Limited Collector's Edition of Fable 2. I've not played any of these games yet, but now I can say that I have all of them. I have the first one for the OG Xbox and 2 and 3 for the 360. I do believe there's a director's cut version or some sort of a special version of it for the original Xbox. I should probably pick that up and say I have the complete version, uh, the complete collection. But yeah, P Peter Molyneux, uh, Guru Larry rags on him pretty much in every single video he does because he is the king of empty promises. <laughs> every single game that he had worked on, the guy would just run his mouth at the press and let everybody know about all these awesome things that he's going to be able to do in these games. And the technology was neither available at that point in time or there just was not time to do sort of that sort of thing. Like, I think it was in the original Fable, he promised everyone that there will be a point in time where you can plant an acorn in the ground. And then over the course of the game, you'll be able to watch this acorn turn into a full-grown tree to show the passage of time. Yeah, that didn't happen at all. Uh, so, yeah, they made two more games and people bought them after he, you know, basically lied to everybody, uh, but whatever, I don't care. These games always looked interesting to me, and I was not part of that hype machine back then for the Fable. I really didn't care, but nowadays, I'll give them a shot. Yes, yes, yes. Aquaman. Mm. Can leave his shoes under my bed anytime. <laughs> long, like I said, that is a long story from the MGC. <laughs> okay, so now we are going into the Xbox One. So lately, since I bought an Xbox One X, and a 4K television, I have been focusing or trying to focus more on getting games for my Xbox One because a lot of them do native 4K where the PlayStation 4 kind of doesn't half the time. And, I mean, even if it's a multiplat, the 4K version's on the Xbox One, and you'll be lucky if it's even close to 4K on the PS4. So I've been focusing on that, and uh, I bought a crap ton of stuff at Best Buy. They had, like, another sale. This time I let... It's Rocket Sauce know about it. Last month, he let me know about one. This month, I let him know. I just happened to get an email saying like, hey, we've got this four-day sale going on. Come on, check us out. Everything was deep discounts. Everything. I mean, everything. So I kind of went crazy on stuff that I've been looking at. So let's see. What did I get there? I got a double dip. Uh, I bought the Middle Earth Shadow of War Definitive Edition. If you remember from my Black Friday pickup from... 2018, uh, I went at uh, Target. They had discounted this from, I think it was $60 down to like 10 or 15 or something like that. And that's why I bought it, not realizing that there was a complete edition out there. Never even opened the other one. So pick this one up for, I do believe, $10. Still sealed, obviously, Best Buy. So pick this one up. Now I can finally try it. I do need to find the first game, though, the complete edition of the original game. What is that? Shadow of Mordor? Want it. Uh, also picked up, didn't think I'd be buying this this soon. I always put these games off for like years, but it was on sale for 20 bucks. Kingdom Hearts 3. <laughs> uh, I still haven't played through the second one. I've barely played through the first one. So yeah, that's going to be a long time coming for that stuff to happen. I just picked up that, was it Kingdom Hearts, the story so far compilation that's for the PlayStation 4. So I might stream that at some point before I get into this one. So yeah, Kingdom Hearts 3. It has more Tron in it, so that makes me happy. Also picked up Far Cry 5 and Far Cry New Dawn. Uh, got each of these for, I think, 15 bucks. Really? In the middle of a stream, someone wants to text me. Okay. Uh, so Far Cry 5, everyone tells me this one is pretty awesome. It's like about a cult, and you're infiltrating the cult, and there's an awesome dog in it, and it's pretty rad. But instead of them going the, the DLC route with extra content, they just decided to release a whole other game based in the same universe. And that's New Dawn, where he plays these, these twin sisters who are like going after the cult or something like that, which I thought was actually pretty cool. That way, I don't have to worry about waiting for this in order to get like the complete edition out before I can play it. I can play this now and play this whenever I feel like it. So yes, yes, yes. And both native 4K with HDR. Happy, happy, happy. Also picked up in that sale, the day one edition of Just Cause 4 just showed up Just Cause 2. There was a reason for that because when I was at uh, Half Price Books like two weeks ago, they had a copy of Just Cause 3. So now I have all four Just Cause games. And they're pretty much all the same. It's always, or, uh, what is it, the, the Batman 
hook thing and parachutes all over the place. So I can play through the entire series now. Awesome. And then the last time, I think this was this past week when I was at Half Price Books, they had a copy of this game that got a lot of crap when it first came out. I don't care. It's by Platinum Games. Wanted it. That is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutants in Manhattan. I think this is supposed to be a sequel to uh, Turtles in Time or something. Or what is it? The third game for the NES? I don't know. Uh, but it's another 3D beat em up. Wanted it because Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Chris Enunciate, are one of my favorites from back in the day, even though my brother was more into them than I was. But in video game form, they're pretty awesome. So I wanted to have that. All right. And now we're going into PS4 territory. Let me see here. Okay, I'll show off the games I just bought normally at first. How about that? So, half price books. Ah, shit. Dropping stuff all over the place. Picked up a copy of The Wolf Among Us from Telltale Games. This was, I think, right after Back to the Future, maybe? Can't remember the order that these games came out. But I've been wanting to buy this for the longest time. It's another one of those uh, Choose Your Own Adventure games that they were known for. Uh, with really great characterizations and graphics and choices and whatnot. So... Uh, I've been wanting to buy this for the longest time, but I just never seem to be able to do it. I'll be like, oh, I want to get Wolf Among Us, and then, oh, but that's on sale, you know, the way I am at the conventions. So, pick this up. Love them Mordor games, straight up Batman, Arkham, Arkham Combat, and mm, we're going to talk about that in a minute. <laughs> so, finally picked up a copy, and I finally pulled the trigger. They had it for, I think, 10 bucks at half price bucks. So, I picked it up. Can't wait to try that one. Uh, also picked up this other game called Rogue Stormers. Uh, it was kind of funny that the way this worked out because Jason had sent me a picture of some games that he had just bought. And this was one of them, but he bought the Xbox One version. And then I go to, to Half Price Books the next day, and this is sitting there for $10. And I said, huh, that's kind of funny. Yeah, I'll pick it up. It's a side-scrolling run-and-gun type of game, kind of like Contra. But I think you can play co-op, yeah, couch co-op, and it's like a it's a roguelike. So characters die, they're dead. Like, yeah. So that's kind of neat. Sounds interesting. So I picked it up. It was cheap. Why not? Blah blah. Okay, let's move some of these things over so they don't start crushing each other. Yeah. Uh, next up, we were just talking about it. Batman: Return to Arkham. So. Uh, I've been wanting to play Batman Arkham Asylum and Arkham City for the longest time. Everyone, this freaking chair is creaking like crazy. <clears throat> it's because of my fat ass. Uh, <laughs> uh, and I had them on the PS3, but I have no way to stream them. I've been wanting to stream all these old games that I've been putting off playing. So um, I went online right after getting, what was it, Arkham Origins and Arkham Knight not too long ago. I was like, I know there's one more game in this series I'm missing. And I found it on, on Amazon. It was like, oh, this is a Return to Arkham thing. Let's let's get that so I have the whole collection now, and then I can play through them all in a row. And then this shows up, and I look at the back, and I'm like, oh, these are just remasters of the first two games in the series. Awesome. But that gives me the opportunity to stream them, which is what I was talking about wanting to do. So I recently beat both of these games on stream in the month of June. I uh, played them back-to-back. -to -back. So each of them took me – I think the first game took me about – Mm, 15 hours, I want to say. And the second one took me about 10 or 12. I can't remember. Both are really fun games. I prefer City over, over Asylum uh, because it's way bigger, more stuff to do. The fighting is refined. The The glitchiness of the first game and the certain things that I had problems with in the first game kind of were fixed in this one, except the whole, you're in a boss battle. Let's just crowd you with, guy, with uh, like thugs to fight at the same time, which kind of annoys the hell out of me. Problem I have with both games is final boss cakewalks. Especially the first game. That was a joke. Second game, Clayface was kind of a that was that was a tough fight, but I beat it on the first try, which is something I did not expect to happen. It took me two times to beat uh, Joker, even though it was because I just didn't know what to do. Uh, but both games are fantastic, and I cannot wait to play Origins and then Night. I gotta wait until I can get away to stream Origins because I have that on the PS3. That one didn't get put anywhere else. <sighs> and uh, Night, and maybe VR. Great games. Really impressed with uh, how these both actually translated to like the new, co the current day generation stuff. Okay, so now we're going to go into what I picked up on 
through that Best Buy sale that I was talking about where I showed off all those games I picked up for the Xbox One. Uh, yeah, wow, there's like five trains going by at the exact same time. Okay. I uh, picked up Yak Yakuza Kiwami 2. Um, I've been wanting to buy this for a while. This means that I have minus part five, which never got a physical copy, but I think they're giving it the Kiwami treatment at some point in the future. Uh, I have all the, cause the physical Yakuza games out there except for five because I think that's only available in Japan. Uh, but, yeah, it's a remaster of Yakuza 2, which was the hardest game to find in the series on the PlayStation 2. Uh, it was, like, super, super expensive. And then out of nowhere, Sega, like, did a, another run of it, like, like what, 12 years out later, which was bizarre. So picked that up while I could, but now I have the remastered version. So, yes, can't wait to play through all these games in a row. And also picked up uh, a game that is kind of contentious. I guess some people think it's awesome. Some people think it's garbage. I haven't given it a shot yet because I haven't played it, but I'm going to be streaming this pretty soon, and that's Days Gone. Uh, I would not have bought this so early because just like all the other new games, I wait for the com the completed version. Wow, I can't talk. The complete version to come out. But when you can get this for $25, you do it. So I jumped on it. A guy that I work with has been playing this religiously since it, the day it came out. He's still playing it, even though he's, like, beating it. I think he's going back and playing through it on the different difficulties. But it sounds interesting. It's a sort of a zombie game, uh, open world. Uh, I saw footage of this at E3, and I really, really wanted it. So, uh, yeah, getting it early like this is... I'm pretty sure I'm going to be screwed by all the DLC. Whatever. Um, I've also been getting a lot of imports for the PS4. Um... Actually, a couple of these are kind of funny. I'll show off the first one. Uh, I picked this one up off of Play Asia, and that is the Capcom Belt Action Collection. This is a whole bunch of Capcom arcade beat em ups in one collection, which is fantastic. Let me see if I can actually read these because the print is really, really small. Uh, we've got seven incredible arcade classics in one, including two titles that have never been available on home consoles. So we got the original Final Fight, The King of Dragons. Knights of the Round, what does that say? Something gear? I can't read it. Captain Commando, something part two, and Battle Circuit. I think it's Knights of the Round, or Knights of the Round part two. Could be. I don't know. I can't read this. Another, that's another one I can't read. It's something gear. Whatevs. Hey, what's up, back in the day, gamer? Welcome. Uh, so all these classic arcade games on one compilation, I had to have it. Um, I think this did, this did come out here, obviously. It came out digital only, so, you know, I'm not down with that. Japan got the actual physical version of it, which is why I got this from Play Asia. Really happy that I did. And then these two games, it's kind of funny. So I was putzing around on eBay, and I was looking for some new games to get, uh, cheap, and... I saw these two pop up as suggestions, so I bought them because they look kind of interesting. I went and watched footage of you on YouTube about or on YouTube about them, and I was like, "Yeah, those look kind of rad." And one of them was something I've been wanting to play for the longest damn time, but I do not like digital games, so I never downloaded it. And Japan got a physical copy, so I wanted it. And then, like the next day, Metal Jesus releases a video with him and Kinsey talking about all the pickups they got while they were in Japan together. And both of these games were on his list. So I'm pretty sure everyone's going to be like, the only reason you bought those is because Metal Jesus talked about it. You're the kind of guy that goes out and buys them and jacks all the prices up. No, I don't. I bought these actually like the day before. Yeah. Uh, one of them was Steel Rats. Uh, this is a Japan-only game. I think it might be digital here. I don't know. We've got a physical version in Japan. It's a platformer where you're on a motorcycle. It's a side-scrolling platformer on a motorcycle where you're jumping with a motorcycle and doing platforming. How many different ways can I describe this? It looks so dumb that I had to have it. <laughs> it just looked like something I can throw on when I get home from work one day when I'm really stressed and just have some fun with it and then put it down and go and play something later, you know, that's more serious, like Days Gone or something. So definitely wanted to pick this up. It looked really fun. Also picked up, it's, it's in Japanese on the front, but it is Hotline Miami, the collected edition. Yeah, this is Hotline Miami 1 and 2 in one collection, although part two was download only, and it has a code in here to download it. Only problem is you have to have a Japanese PSN account in order to download it. So technically, all I got was Hotline Miami 1. Whatever. Got it really cheap off of eBay, and 
I can play part one, which I've never done before. And I was playing it last night. I streamed Agony yesterday on my Twitch channel, and that game frustrated me so much that I rage quit. I just said, you know, at one point I just said, you know what, I'm done streaming. I'm goodbye, and I hung up. I disconnected, and I was just like, you know what, I need to play something to wipe my mind of that travesty of a game. And this is what I put on, and I ended up playing this for like a good two hours straight. It is so much fun. It's hard as hell. It is a top-down um, shoot 'em up, I guess. Uh, where it's it's pixel graphics. You're basically like a hitman, and you're given these orders to go to different places and kill people. Sometimes you have to do it stealthily. Sometimes you have to use guns. Uh, it's it's really strange. Um, and then like after the job is done, you have to you go to like a restaurant or like a bar or a liquor store to get payment. And it's always like in the form of something else. Like, oh, here's a bottle of booze on the house, and it's got your money in it. It's really weird. The one, the one that I played last night before I stopped playing, like you wake up in the morning for your next job and there's like a woman brushing your teeth in your bathroom. And I thought it was kind of funny, like a naked woman. <laughs> it was kind of cool. Um, but yeah, it's really overly violent. All the different weapons you can pick up. I had a lot of fun just using a, a straight up knife and just knifing people. <laughs> it is a lot of fun. And the music is fantastic. It's like this 80s techno-y stuff. So new wave techno. Really fun game. Highly recommended. I'm sure a lot of I'm sure everybody's played this. I'm the last one to this party. Um, and then we've got some PSVR games. Oh. Did you order Judgment, Chris? It's Yakuza spinoff. My game came in on Friday. Judgment. Which uh, place was that from? I don't think so. Um, so the new PSVR games I got were from overseas. Uh, both of these came out in England or the UK and uh, picked them up off of Amazon. One is called Here They Lie. Uh, this is a horror game. It says, death is no escape. Descend into a dark and disquieting horror that will test your psychological limits. Explore a nightmarish a city where sinister creatures look around every corner. Wrestle with life or death choices and your own morality as you uncover the mystery of the woman in yellow, who's on the cover here. And that sounded interesting. I'm really enjoying playing horror games in virtual reality on the PSVR. It's fantastic. Uh, I have more of those than anything else on this console. <laughs> yep. And the other one is called Torn. And what uh, drew me to this one was that this cover art is basically ripped off of the key art for the house. What is it? The Haunting of Hill House on Netflix. It's essentially the same thing, except that instead of one person's face, it's like every one of the main characters standing here and the houses are coming out of them. Uh, so, yeah, uh, this is another horror game. It says, Torn is a dark sci-fi mystery built exclusively for VR. Explore the abandoned mansion of Dr. Lawrence Talbot, teeming with the puzzles and machinations of an eccentric disembodied scientist. It's a narrative puzzle game and evolves into a dark character-driven story as you slowly uncover the truth about Talbot and the new dimension that he calls The Parallel. Interesting as hell. Can't wait to play this. I'm definitely going to be streaming that one. Yes. I'm all talking about these new games and you're playing Arkanoid. Fantastic. <laughs> I know you're more about the retro than the modern, and that's awesome because I'm into both. Uh, and then for the Nintendo Switch, I pre-ordered this when it was first announced. I could have gotten it through um, Kickstarter, but I tend not to want to do Kickstarter games because... There's no guarantee that you're actually going to get anything, and I don't feel like ever throwing my money away if I can help it. So it's a rare, rare thing when I kickstart anything. Uh, but I knew this was game, this was going to be coming out on its own, regardless of the Kickstarter or not, so I picked up a copy of Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. Uh, this was probably one of the most popular games kickstarted on Kickstarter ever, I want to say. Everyone talks about it. Everyone's been streaming the hell out of it. Everyone's been bragging about how awesome it is. Uh, I also have the Curse of the Moon, which was like the prequel bonus content that I think they got as a stretch goal. They made it as a stretch goal, and I have that. I got that from Limited Run Games. That is fantastic. This is essentially Symphony of the Night from Castlevania. You know, Symphony of the Night. It's a, it's a Metroidvania in that vein. It's created by the same guy who made that game, uh, but the graphics are obviously more modern. But I've been watching people stream it. I was watching uh, the Game Beaters streaming this the day that it came out, and I was like, wow, that looks fantastic. So... Definitely happy to pick this one up. Got to play through that. I want to finish playing through Curse of the Moon first. What is up, church? What's going on, brah? Brah. Brah. <laughs> so now let's get into all of the games that I've gotten through, like the specialty websites, like Limited Run, Strictly Limited, uh, I'm 8-Bit. Um, uh, who else is there? 
limited what is it limited run limited strict limited run strictly limited i am 8 bit i can't remember all of them there's too many uh first one is a playstation 3 game god damn what are, what i don't know what this why but limited run decided to do a playstation 3 game and they just released another one in the series and it really pissed me off that i totally forgot about it but it's odd world stranger's wrath hd for the ps3 um i already have this for the vita but I don't play my Vita very often, so I wanted to be able to play it on a console instead. So I picked this one up. The latest one they released was New and Tasty. They released it again for the PlayStation 3. I totally missed out on that. I forgot about it. I was so pissed because I was trying to get all the Oddworld games you know, in physical form. But I do have it for the PlayStation 4, so it's not like I can't play it. So I'm okay with it. After a while, I thought about it. I was like, yeah, you're okay. But now I can finally play this in HD on a home console outside of the original Xbox, which I also have a copy of this for also. Uh, but yeah, it's just a remastered version of Stranger's Wrath. It's a first-person shooter in the Oddworld universe. I love the Oddworld universe, so I was really super stoked about that. Got this one from I Am 8-Bit. I pre-ordered this the day it came out because Game on Assist had talked about this and like the games that she beat in 2018, and this was on her list. And I was watching the footage that she put posted about it, and I was like, that looks bizarre. So naturally i wanted to try it out and that's donut county um i do believe this started off as a mobile game and then it just ended up port being ported to like every console out there but what it is is katamari damasi in reverse uh instead of you rolling up a ball and collecting things and making the ball bigger and bigger there's a hole in the ground that you control and you're swallowing things up into the hole and the more things you swallow the bigger the hole gets and eventually you're swallowing up whole buildings <laughs> and stuff like that you start off really small You'll be sucking up like plants that are on the ground and cactuses and stuff like that. And then as it gets bigger, next thing you know, you're swallowing up entire skyscrapers and stuff. And it's really fun. The story is actually trying to say something about not being a dick. <laughs> uh, you know, be nice to people and all that. And that raccoons suck, which they do because they ripped a hole in my old house's roof and pissed over my head for two years um so beat this on stream and i want to say about three hours and it was really really fun it's short it's simple it's sweet it's it's fun i really enjoyed it got this one also from uh i am 8-bit along with the vinyl soundtrack uh and that is the grim fandango remastered edition came in this really cool slip cover church and corpse of pico it's like mgc all over again hey what's up 8-bit glitch how's it going Welcome to the stream, yo. Oh, God. Got this. this thing is, like, on here. Like, it is, like, super tight. Like it should be. Um, so, yeah, Grim Fandango Remastered. This is a classic LucasArts point-and-click adventure game. And I am starting to really get into those types of games. Double Fine made this one for LucasArts back in the day. And holy crap, I played a little bit of this on, like, I don't play games on my computer. But every once in a while, you know, I'll, I have like a wish list on Steam. I do have Steam, uh, but I rarely use it. And one of the games that I had on my wish list was this, and it got super discounted one day. And then uh, my dad gave me a Steam card that was like a uh, gift certificate, and I ended up using it to buy all these discount games. I got like twenty games and like you know on a fifty dollar card, and this was one of them. And I played through about half of it, and I really enjoyed it. And now being able to play it you know, on my four K television, yes, yes. Uh, fantastic graphics. It's like everything's like Day of the Dead looking. I love it. It is so cool. I can't wait to jump into this one again and start over and probably beat it. I will definitely stream the shit out of this. <clears throat> and then going into half or uh, limited run, uh, pick this one up because I almost bought this on Play Asia. This was when I started having trouble with buying things from Play Asia, like about two years ago, where whenever I would buy something, the transaction wouldn't actually happen. It would like take the stuff that I put that take the stuff that I thought I had just paid for and put it like in this like holding pattern. And then I would get an email like a day later saying, all that stuff you wanted, it's still sitting there waiting to be paid for if you want it. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I already did pay for it. I did PayPal and everything. It just never wanted to go through. The payments never wanted to go through. So I haven't bought anything from Play Asia in a long time. They just revamped the way they do things. So now I'm able to buy things from Play Asia again without any problems. And I've been doing a lot of that lately too. Uh, and this was a game I was trying to buy the Japanese version of, and then all that pro all those problems I was having stopped me from doing so. Uh, and then when I saw that Limited Run was going to be releasing a localized version of it, I jumped on it. This is a remaster of a Sega Saturn game that I've always wanted, but it is super freaking expensive. So being able to get it like this is great. And the Saturn game was called The Game Paradise. Uh, it's actually called Game Tengoku Cruisin' Mix Special. 
but really it's called the Game Paradise. What it is, it's, it's a shmup, but it's all about video games. So it's like basically a shmup in an arcade, and there's lots of video game references everywhere you go. And it looked really fantastic. Like, there's cute em up stuff. There's, I don't know what company this is from. The guy, I don't know. I just remember watching Metal Jesus talking about this with, uh, I can't remember her name, from uh, Circuits and Coffee. I can't remember what her name is. Uh, they were talking about this, and it looked fantastic and immediately went to eBay to find a copy of it. It was so expensive. But to be able to play, like, a remastered version of it, version of it on my PlayStation 4, yes. Also picked up through them a VR game. Limited Run's been getting on the VR train lately, and I'm really happy about it. It's called Prison Boss VR. <laughs> this is so stupid. Uh, craft Your Way Out of Jail is the, is the tagline in the back. Prison Boss VR is a crafting and trading game turning your living room into a jail cell. Craft cigarettes, alcohol, and cookies for other inmates. Customize your cell as your reputa reputation grows. 11 different craftable items, three modes, story, attack, and boss, and a great jazzy soundtrack weird uh the cover makes this guy look like he's about to get effed in the a okay i hope that doesn't happen in the game but it was so strange i had to have it <laughs> you posted your tmg part one video and in my part two oh yeah <laughs> thank you dude rockstar up on stage with rebel gaming club Definitely a little poor. Yep. I love that game. Crafting Smokes, game of the year. <laughs> Never heard of that one. Like I said, I, I they released the VR games on Limited Run on Wednesdays instead of Fridays. And the ones they've been releasing lately have been strange as hell, but I've been buying them just because I want, you know, I love VR games. I want to play as many of them as I can. The one they released this past week was called Accounting VR, and it's by the guys who made Trover versus the Universe or Trover against the Universe. So I was like, it's going to be like this funny little thing. So. That's going to be coming pretty soon. They also released one that was like a train simulator in VR. I picked that one up just because, you know, shits and giggles. Why not? Hey, what's up, Saru? Welcome. What's up, Sir HC Man? Welcome, everybody. Glad to see you. Uh, picked this one up from Strictly Limited. That's the one I couldn't remember. Uh, Raging Justice. <laughs> this is a uh, beat em up, like a side scrolling beat em up like Streets of Rage, just with modern stuff. By Team 17, I think they're the ones that are in charge of Worms, if I'm not mistaken. So definitely wanted to pick this one up. It's a one- to three-player co-op game, and I think you can do it online, I think. Yeah, no. Oh, no, it's it's local. Ooh, only local multiplayer. I like it. <laughs> and it has remote play. I can play this on my Vita if I want. Weird. Uh, but anyway, yeah, Raging Justice. I really wanted to get a copy of this. Uh, Captain Algebra and I, Captain Algebra actually texted me one day. He's like, did you get Raging Justice? Because he's a huge uh, Streets of Rage 2 fan. I was like, uh, yeah, dude, duh. <laughs> also got this from Strictly Limited. It is for the Switch. It's R-Type Dimensions EX. Pre-ordered this a long-ass time ago because I'm a huge shmup fan nowadays, and R-Type is one of my favorites. So this remastered version, I don't know if this is a... Yeah, it's R-Type 1 and R-Type 2. That have been remastered into one collection. Yes, yeah, so with 2D graphics and shiny 3D graphics added onto it. Yes, yeah, so I wanted to be able to play this on my Switch whenever I go. I don't have many. I think I have two shmups on the Switch. So this is you know making up for that. I really, like when I take my Switch to work, uh, when we have a slow day, I want to have a variety of things to play. And this is adding to that. And I love our type, so I had to have it. And, of course, the big one that they released late, uh, recently was the Toe Jam and Earl Back in the Groove. This is essentially Toe Jam and Earl 4, I think. But it goes back to the play style of the original Toe Jam and Earl. Uh, I really loved Toe Jam and Earl back in the day. It was really hard to get into at first back then. I remember when I first came out, I bought it like day one. And I remember playing it for like, a couple of hours. And like when I put the game, the controller down, I was just like, I still don't know what I need to be doing in that game. I really don't. But it grows on you. And the, the, the graphics were strange. It was kind of choppy. And like the leveling thing with like everything was a different level, and like and there was like it was like little floating islands. It was just it was just bizarre, but like the game had personality, and I, that went a long way with me. And the second game turned into like a side-scrolling platformer, and I still enjoyed that one, uh, even though it's not as good as the first. And then the third one is just what <laughs> that's on the OG Xbox. I have that also, but seeing that they went back to the original play style really went a long way with me. So I had to have a copy of this. Can't wait to try that one out. 
Yeah, I ordered Ninja Saviors today. I actually had pre-ordered it on Play Asia when Play Asia first went live with it about a month ago, and I pre-ordered it with the second Psycho collection for the Switch. And then I saw that Strictly Limited was going to be releasing a localized version of it, and not like you know. So I figured, why not just get the localized version? I so I called or I texted uh, Play Asia today and told them to cancel the the Ninja Saviors that I ordered. And now I have credit to spend on Play Asia. Yeah, I got I ended up getting it from Strictly Limited instead. So yes, yes, yes. <laughs> we both did. quit being simpatico with me, Church. Quit it. It's no. Bruh. <laughs> yeah, what's up, Chum Nasty? What's going on, man? Welcome to the stream. Um, I think that's it. I think. Yeah, I do believe that's it. But there's Two specialty things that I have this month that I bought from a friend of mine uh, that I went to school with. I've known this guy since grade school. Uh, I think from kindergarten through third grade, and then I ended up going get like my the zoning changed in my area. Ended up going to a different school. Didn't see him from five through six, and then from junior high all the way through high school, uh, we were in school together. Uh, he was at the Midwest Gaming Classic. Uh, Tony, if you're still in here, yes. I got this from the same guy that you got that Legend of Zelda artwork from. Uh, his name is Shampton, uh, and uh, he posted pictures of these on um, Instagram. And he had, like, I want to say eight different new things that he had made, and two of them caught my eye because they're from a specific game that I absolutely love. And I wanted to pick them up, and I contacted him. I was like, I want them. I want them now. And he sold them to me really cheap. He actually covered shipping. Shipping for these things was insane. He covered the shipping because they were kind of expensive. So I ended up getting these from him yesterday, and it's a gigantic wooden Samus and a gigantic wooden Metroid, which is awesome. Uh, and they're made with this really cool reflective material, and it's like it's wood on the back, and then it has like I think these are all stickers on the front that he has made to look like pixels, and then he shellacks them. And yeah, these look absolutely fantastic. I cannot wait to put these on my wall. I, you have no idea how thrilled I was that he was actually selling these because I don't remember seeing these at the convention. But then again, I wasn't planning on buying any like wall decor at the convention. I was just going after games specifically. But yeah, it's awesome. I have more. Like this place is starting to look ridiculous. <laughs> I'm hanging that up as we speak. Yeah, it's my fave pickup. That's super sweet. What's his contact anymore? Um. If you go on Instagram, it's 8bit0, I think is his name that he goes by. Or just look up look up Shampton. Uh, but yeah, he even signed the back of this one. Thanks, you know, was it Pixel uh, what's it? Pixel Party? Pixel Party. 2019. Thanks, Chris Shampton. Awesomeness. Yeah, those are really cool. Those are then they're super eye-catching too. That's I think what, what I like the most about them is how reflective they are. And like if you look at them from different angles, it's different colors. It's fantastic. I love it. <clears throat> So those are my pickups for the month of June. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know I did. Uh, more stuff to play. I've actually played more of this. I've actually been streaming a lot more. Streamed Donut County in June. I streamed both Arkham, the first two Arkham games. I streamed Agony. Church, I don't know how you beat that stupid game. <laughs> I hated it. Um, I, I rage quit that on stream. <laughs> um, what else did I play this month? Uh, Resident Evil 2 remake. I also rage quit that. <laughs> I suck at video games. But yeah, um, next week I'm going to start streaming. I think day's gone. So Thursday, 6 p.m. on my Twitch channel. Just look up the old S Retro Gamer. Day's gone. I'm going to start streaming that. Um, Bat Streams. What's up, Chris? Welcome. I think he's one of the few people that actually comes to my streams. <laughs> so. Yes, thanks for, for joining me tonight. I, I really enjoy doing these live pickup streams. I've got a new Top 3 Tuesday coming out this week with Jason of Corpse Flood Gaming. That's going to be the retro games based on cartoons. And I've got two, since I've got a five day weekend coming up, I'm going to be doing a lot of editing. So I'm going to be putting out a lot of video content on top of streaming. So keep an eye out for all that stuff. And until next time, I'm Chris, the old ass retro gamer, signing off. Open the door, there's a bomb in there.